What's up, folks? It's your big homie. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here. I'm cooking. Y'all can see. I'm cooking good. Hey, I'm home alone. And I just feel good today. Right? Um, what up, Alan? What up, what up, Uncle Al? You my man. And y'all, for who all don't know, I've been calling him Alan White for years. I don't know how many years. His fucking name is Alan Williams. <laughs> but anyway, that's another that's another thing, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Hey, man, I got to sit here and talk about some things, man. You know, today I'm celebrating, but I'm celebrating for a different reason. You know, today I'm celebrating because as a youth growing up, I ain't had no silver spoon in my mouth. You know, my parents had to struggle for everything, and they taught me how to get through a struggle, not how to struggle, but how to get through a struggle. And that's by working. You know, and and I had great examples. You know, I always refer to my Uncle Richard, my Auntie Charlene, my Shima. You know, I, I refer to my my family because it was my um, inspiration of things I can have. My mama, cousin Ella, you know, they showed me things you can get from working. You know, and I know the march and the protest and everything going on. But, you know, what up, what up? Um, what we really got to think about, you know, when you protesting and marching and stuff, America was built on one thing. You know, it was built on our back slavery. That's how America became great. But how America really pulled the wool over our, our eyes is the um, miseducation of black people, not just men for black women too. And when I say the miseducation, I know it's a book called the miseducation of black people, but here's some facts though. You know, all through school, you know, they never taught us about um they never taught us about banking. You know, you learn about banking when you went over open a bank account, then you still learn all the tricks and trades of banking. You no, know, they didn't teach us about insurance. You know, a lot of a lot of big businesses made money on insurance in America. Don't believe me? Do your research. You know what I mean, they didn't teach us about politics, the laws. You know, they taught us about the Constitution, but you know that was like once you graduate from eighth grade, then you ain't hear no more about it really. Fact. Do the research. They didn't. They didn't tell us how to. Goddamn aldermen's work, the mayor's work, the senate work. They didn't teach us that in school. So, you know, they got us to work and it made you believe in something of theirs. You know, they didn't they didn't teach you about ownership. You know, you learned about ownership about getting out here and owning some shit. I never knew they never taught me about I could own my own business growing up none through school. I just had to learn that on my own and strive for it. You know, like, you take the NBA, for, for instance, right? You know, we all watch the NBA, but guess what? You got some some black players, a bunch of them, almost 80%, 90%. You got a few black managers and, you know, assistant coaches and a few coaches. But if you look at the ownership of the team, right, the ownership of the NBA team is a white person. And what they do with their companies is they pass it down generation to generation. That's where there's no black owners to a team. You could be a partial owner, yeah, I could let you get part of the corporation, but I ain't going to never give you control of the corporation. You know what I'm saying? So anytime I feel like I could just buy your shares out of the corporation, if you think I'm lying, do your research. Same thing with the NFL. NFL. Name your black owner of the team. They pass that shit down generation to generation to generation. And they keep ownership. So they'll pay you to work for them. But if they could pay you hundreds of million dollars to work for them, imagine how much money that they're making. I'm just saying. 
I ain't gonna give you a hundred million dollars to work for me, and I don't make a hundred million, a trillion dollars. Let's say that, you know, because that's the case. I do the shit myself. Them niggas is making, making a gang of money. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta look at this that. And I know we as black people, we wanna do our own thing. You know what I'm saying? We always wanna do our own thing. But if your family got a business, man, learn that fucking business. Pass that shit down generation to generation. Right? Because I was talking to one of my homies the other day. And he kind of he kind of fucked me up, right? His father stayed in Virginia. He had a shoe company where they actually made shoes. I mean cut the soles and stuff and sold them together like not send them off somewhere to get them made but they actually made shoes right I was like damn and that was like his, that was like five generations of shoemakers up in Virginia right but when it came in not his turn but his father's turn to you know inherit the company his father decided he wanted to go do something else you know, so his father sold the company to start a construction company, right? His father's construction company didn't do well. But they had a business that was doing well. And instead of taking some money out of that business and playing with the construction company or trying a construction company, his father decided to end the family legacy. Wow, ah, what's our legacy going to be you know, it ain't always about you, and that's what you got to think about. That's why I'm making this video. It ain't always about you. You know, it's who you going to lead this business to, who going to run it. You know, it's a legacy. I don't care if it's a million-dollar business or a $20 business. You know, you got to have a $20 business, and you just couldn't get it right. But if you could explain it to your kids or your nephews and nieces, somebody else in your family can probably get it right. And I'm just going to throw it out here for me, for instance. I got a t-shirt business, right? I probably make forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 out of it a year. And, you know, it's cool. But I help my niece. Um, man, why do you call this girl money? She little. That's why I call her my niece. But she actually my cousin. I help my cousin, Jamila. You know, I just gave her the game. She spent her own money. Let me just say that. Facts. Let me just say that. She spent her own money. I just told her how to do it, whatever, right? And I give her great advice. Her and Toya, right? But what I'm trying to say is, when I look at her artwork and how she actually put her shirt together, I said, damn, cuz, we having a conversation. I said, cuz, you know, hands down, I've been doing this shit for a minute. You just jumped in the game. Your artwork is unbelievable. Like, when I got people, like, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to send my business over to my cousin. Now, she might take this shit and go way past me. Because she just got in the game, right? I'm not going to be mad at that. I'm going to celebrate that. Because I'd rather see my cousin get it. If I'm, I'm doing a bunch of things, and if I got knowledge of something, I'm going to encourage her to go ahead for shoot for the shoot for the ceiling. And my cousin Toy. Shoot for the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you could see it in them like, damn, they better than me at it. For the feeling, man, you know what I'm saying? But I'm celebrating today for all the people who told me coming up, oh, you ain't gonna be able to do this. Go work with your hands. You ain't gonna be able to do that. No, oh, you don't. Just go get you a job and work for somebody. I stepped out of faith, man. I stepped out of faith and I got it. I'm getting it. I know I look like a fat boy or whatever. I am a fat boy because I'm cooking my ass off. But I, you know, I'm out here getting it. And what I mean is, look, I was going, um, I was plotting on leaving my job, right? But I think I'm going back. But I ain't, you know, people don't understand. I ain't had a paycheck in like eight weeks. But my hustle game with all my companies, ain't shit got cut off. Ain't shit, you know, ain't shit behind or none of that. You know, and what I tell people, my hustle might not be better than your hustle, 
But the only thing about my hustle is I'm not going to stop. I don't quit. My folks used to tell me, well, you're doing this business, that business, doing that business. Ain't none of them going to be successful until you sit down and do just one. What? No, I can multitask. That's what it's called. And I've been getting it. I'm out here every day. If I don't even leave my house, you know, I'm going to make this shit pop off. That's what I'm going to do. You know, and I just like, you know, I, I like celebrating the day. I'm home alone, drinking my wine, cooking. My neighbors already like, can I get some food? I got y'all. I told them I got them. But, um, man, niggas just told me I wasn't going to do it. But even like my my homie that's on here is named Alan Williams. Not Alan right? But, um, I didn't think I'd be good in doing the, um, flipping cribs and doing the rehab. I went up to Michigan. That nigga showed me the game. And I've been successful all, ever since I've been doing it. You know, I've been successful at that shit. I ain't stopped. You know what I'm saying? I ain't quit. You know, it's easy to start some shit and be like, all right, I did it, so now I'm going to quit. No, I keep doing that shit. I stay on the fucking grind. And that's what I want to tell people. You know, people, you know, shit might seem like it's glamorous when you get in the bread, but sometimes it ain't that glamorous. Sometimes you got to sacrifice some things to get some things. You know, with me, let me tell you what I had to sacrifice. You know, people might call me an ass or whatever, whatever. You know, even my kids might be kind of upset at me as they were younger. I sacrificed a lot of time of being with my family and my kids to be out here to get it so they can have some things or I can provide some things. But kids don't understand that until they become parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tell people all the time, for me to get on the highway to drive 100, 200 miles, 300 miles to get a check, it's nothing. I drove that far and more just to get some dope to sell. So if I can go get a job, I'm going to go out there and get it. That's why I work in Indianapolis. I work up in Michigan. I work in Chicago. You know, I go to Wisconsin sometimes. I will go out here and get it. I'm not going to quit. You know? And that's what I want to tell y'all. Like, don't stop because shit get hard. You got to dream. Man, keep on, keep on at that shit. Don't, don't stop. Boy, y'all see this barbecue, boy? Let me tell y'all something. This motherfucker, um, hey, I got this nigga down there in Benton Harbor, Michigan. His name Master Blaster, right? This motherfucker taught me how to, um, put them turkey legs on, on, on the grill. Woo! I gotta give a shout out to that motherfucker, because I got like four turkey legs on this bitch. I got T-bones on this bitch. I got chicken wings and polar sausage. And get what? I'm home alone. But I feel good. So when I feel good, I just cook. I ain't gonna even lie to y'all. I just cook. I don't have no reason. I get this shit away to my neighbors. You know? My neighbors appreciate shit. Let me just say that. My neighbors, when I was in Chicago, they appreciated that shit. But while I'm out here in Michigan, they be like, damn, you cooking today? I'm like, yeah. It's like, all right. But one of my neighbors, she was so cool. She like, look. You always feed us. He gave me $100 today. I'm happy as hell. You know what I'm saying? But I was going to get him some food anyway. Just cause it's just me here. Y'all see what I put on the grill? And it's just me. Man, I give her the food. I don't, I don't care. I just cook because I like to cook and it, it relax my mind. You know what I'm saying? And the day I was in my feelings because I was thinking back some of my closest friends. You ain't going to be successful. You doing all these business. You need to just settle down and do one. No, I'm going to keep pushing. I can't quit. Now, then, I got plans to start two new business next year. Right, I said two new business. See, they looking at where I'm at right now. I'm thinking about something else I need to be doing. See, I'm not going to stop. My hustle is not going to stop. And what I want to do is tell you all, don't stop. And don't think about the money. Now, I used to chase a lot of money, right? I promise you I did. That job paying this amount, I'm going to get it. That job paying this amount, I'm going to get it. Stop that. 
Don't take the money. I mean, make sure you make the money, pay your bills, and be happy. But money is not, <coughs> oh, excuse me, money is not going to make you happy. You got to find what within you that's going to make you happy. It ain't about money. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? I sit at home. As long as I know I got food and food, all my bills are paid, I'm good. I can sit at home and be comfortable. You know? A little money in the bank, I'm chilling. My kids straight, I'm chilling. You know what I'm saying? But just because I'm chilling, it's something in me just make me go out and get it. And I don't mean to go out and get it just because it's a dollar attached to it, because every dollar ain't a good dollar. You know what I'm saying? It ain't. And then it becomes like, I be getting these runs sometimes, where I get a lot of money real quick, and I be like, damn, boy, this is like that dope money, because that shit be coming in. I mean, like thousands on top of thousands, that shit be coming in quick. And then I have some slow peak season. But because I came out the hood, yeah, you know I mean, my mom and them taught me how to budget money and how to stretch money. So now when the money come in quick, I don't spend it quick like I get it right back. I appreciate it. I save it. And I stretch it. When you learn how to stretch this dollar, you can save more dollars. No, you ain't got to go out and spend it because you made it. And that's the fact. And, you know, that's what they want us to do. They want us to be a consumer and not a producer or nothing. If you think about this for real, think about your household and everything that runs in your household. How much money, how much of that shit do you produce on your own? And how much money do you spend outside the house? Like for instance, I tell people in the door, I cook more at home and I cook like the best of them. You know what I mean? I make steaks, gyro, fucking um, Italian beef. I cook all that shit at home. Cheese sticks, all that. Nachos, whatever you buy at the at the restaurant, I cook it at home. So when I can save that money that I'm spending at the restaurant and spend it in my house and then take some of it and put it in savings, then I'm okay. Like, for instance, this shirt I got on, looks like Versace, but then a savage up under if you ever notice me in the street, I don't wear nobody else's clothes. That's nonsense. It cost me fucking, um, I was in the mall yesterday. It cost me like $3.50 to produce a t-shirt. I'm in a van shop because I was thinking about getting me some more black vans. But I realized I own a pair. I'm like, I like these hoodies and sweaters, but I'm like, I can go home and make that shit. And that's exactly what I'm doing, bootleg that shit. Learn how to save some money. Well, would I pay you $55 for a hoodie that I could produce the same hoodie for $5? Come on. Come on. Even like that dude, Alan Williams, nigga taught me the correct way of how to patch holes in the walls, how to paint. Why would I go out and pay somebody to do that shit? Now I know how to do it in my own home. I fix my own shit. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all ever notice, I do pay homage to the OGs. Them niggas taught me the game. You know? That's some real shit out here. You got to learn how to do some shit for yourself. Don't. It ain't always about paying somebody. Because I, I used to be caught up in that, oh, I got the money, I just pay somebody to do that. I got the money, I just pay somebody. No, sometimes you need to just get out and do it for yourself. And when you get it done yourself, you look back and be like, damn, I accomplished that. Because, yeah, you're going second, to second guess yourself. But then when you finally see your own work, you be like, damn, I did that. I did that. And I'm going to tell you, when I used to go to Ben Harbor and flip them cribs, they be fucked up. And I mean fucked up. But when I get done with them, I be like, god damn, I could move in these motherfuckers. I did that. That's what, that's what it's about. So, I'm celebrating because y'all got to go to the bathroom. I'm celebrating the day for everybody growing up from fucking birth until I'm now to present. Who told me I couldn't do some shit. I wasn't smart enough. You know, I just, you know, they just, you know, motherfuckers talk down to you just to, so they could build themselves up. I'm celebrating for them. Not like I'm rubbing in their face. I'm celebrating for them. The reason I'm celebrating for them is they was my motivation to go hard. 
So every time you tell me I can't do something, I'll be like, thank you. I'll be mad. I'll be mad. I ain't going to lie. I'll be mad. But in the same token, I, you know, when I get back myself, I'll be like, oh, I'm going to show them thank you. So I always just want to thank everybody for the motivation. Because, you know, motherfuckers, motherfuckers hate on you in your face and, and don't even realize they're hating on you. Well, why are you trying to do that? Ain't you doing this and that and that? You ain't going to be able to do everything. That's hating. Especially when you believe you're a god. Yeah. I believe I'm a god. If I'm made in his image, I should be able to do everything he created, right? That's what I'm saying. If God is my father and he made me in his image, I should be able to do anything and everything I want to do. That's all I'm saying. Think about what I just said. If God, your father, anything he created, you should be able to do. And that go for man or woman, because this ain't always about us men. You should be able to do everything, except have a baby. I don't want to have no baby. I salute some women. That's some painful shit. I see my kids be born. I don't want to go through that shit. But, hey, if y'all want to do me a favor and yourself a favor, teach these youngins about how these politics work. It's all this police brutality. Yeah, it's going to go down, but it's going to come back up. Until they change the law, the policy, and that police union, this shit still going to keep going. Real fact. Until we start killing them, but every time they kill one of us, this shit still going to keep going. But we don't want to get to that point. But if we can figure out a way to change the laws and the policy, then we're going to be some greater people. So we got to teach our kids about politics. See, we don't raise kids to be politicians. We raise our kids to be everything else. But until you can change the laws and the policies, shit going to be the same. Like they talking about defunding the police station. That's some bullshit in the third degree. Because let me just tell y'all one thing. For every police station in the United States, at least 70% of their finance goes to what? Drugs. That's what it goes to, buying military equipment for drug dealers. Guess what? America was based on drug dealers. When they started fucking with drugs, like the weed, they did that to stop the Mexicans. Now, for you really want to know where cocaine was from, they did that. To stop the Asian. That was they drug. If you think I'm lying, do your research. Call me back. Inbox me on this if you think I'm lying. You know what I'm saying? Heroin and cocaine, that was them Asian drugs. But when they came over to work on the, on the uh, railroads and the railroads got built and shit, then they wanted to figure out a way to get rid of them. So they either locked them up and sent them back home. Reported them. Same thing about the weed and the Mexicans. Boom, deporting them. But guess what? The Native Americans never deported nobody. How about that? So we got to teach our kids about politics. You know, we just got to do it. We got to teach them so they can survive and not have to worry about being killed. Like, that'd be one of my, my biggest fears because, you know, I'm out of town in different little small counties and stuff. One of these cops to take me out. They ain't going to do shit. They probably won't even have a march for me. They just going to have some chicken and potato salad. My family going to cry, you know, and they going to be thinking about me. But then it's going to go on as usual. Now, they didn't bury this man. You know, I'm hoping the protest keep going. Don't stop because he buried. Don't stop. And for you motherfuckers, let me just say one thing. For real. Let me get up on this. Let me just say this. Stop taking pictures with these police officers and your kids like everything all good. You hurting the movement. Everything ain't all good until they change the law, until they change the policy. You know, I'd be seeing people outside, oh, oh, this officer's good, this officer's good. Uh, if an uh, officer sees some bad shit going on and he be silent about it, he ain't a good officer. That's just fact. 
You know, we, we gotta we gotta wait, you know, quit hurting the movement. That's all I'm saying. Quit hurting the movement. I see these motherfuckers all oh, now let me stand by the police officer. What the fuck? They ain't changed no laws. They still choking you up, they still killing you. And if it ain't happening to your family, it's happening to another family. If it happened to one of us, it happened to all of us. So teach your kids now how the banking system works. Teach your kids now about ownership. Teach your kids now how the system works so they can get into these politics. All right, I got to go, man. I got to go. I love y'all. Real shit. I'm just at home alone cooking my ass off. But let's let's teach y'all you, you know what I'm saying? Or even if you don't teach them, because I learned a lot of things by watching other people. Let's show them by example. Let's show them by example. You know what I'm saying? Let's just show them. You know what I'm saying? My nigga on here, I'm going to pay a lot of homage to this nigga, right? Because he a diamond in the rough. The nigga loud as hell. If y'all ever go on Allen Williams' page, this nigga loud, bold in the motherfucker. But you know one thing you don't notice about him? He always works. And that's something we need to teach y'all you. You need to work. This nigga got his own company, but he will go work for somebody else. And I tell people that all the time. Just because you got a company, hey, get that money. But if you can still go do something else, go do it. Hey, I, I pay a lot of homage to this dude. You know what I'm saying? I talk shit about him, too. Well, I love that man. Real shit, and he know I love him. He gave me a meal ticket. That's what I'm going to call it. Because the knowledge he gave me, I can eat for the rest of my life, and my kids will never have to worry about going home. Now, when somebody give you that and didn't ask for nothing in return, now that I said that, he's going to ask me for something. But, you know, he gave me the game, and he was like, all right, man, you, you got it. His keys to it. Now it's up to you. You in the dough. Now you got to show and prove to stay in the dough. And I've been there. And my name good. But he showed me that shit. So let's be an example to these youth, man. Let's show them the game. The real game. Not to just the fast money. See, that's what fucks us up. We show these youth the fast money game, you know. But we won't show them that slow money, that's good money, that study money. Why? That that no jail worry about money. See, the game Uncle Al gave me, because that's what I call him. His name Alan Williams, but I call him Uncle Al. The game that he gave me, I don't never have to worry about the police. As long as I keep my paperwork right, Man, last year I probably made like seventy, eighty thousand dollars with that company. Who gives you that type of game? The police couldn't say shit to me. Shit, I bought one, two, three, four trucks and two cars and a house off that game. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay respect where it's due. Let's show our kids a better way. I got to go. Hey, Al, I'll see you, but I can't read. I mean, I can read. Let me say that. Let me correct that. But y'all know I be squinting on here. I can't see that little bitty shit. But you know I love you, man. All right, y'all. Now. Drop the damn phone. How I get off this shit?